There's a, there's a cool feeling right now in Sens Nation. Horrific segue. No. As Mark Mathot moves on to the nether regions of Dallas, and the price was like a second round pick in 2050. Yeah. And, and a guy I've never heard of. Kipper, your general thought. My feeling is I think Pierre Dorian, I think the Sens kind of mishandled this yeah. on a couple of levels. Agree or disagree? I don't know what choice they had, Sid, just in terms of hey, the salary cap stinks. And it really stinks uh, when there's an expansion team coming and then you got to you got to let go some of some some good pieces. And listen, I was very tough on a enough when he was here. But since he went to Ottawa, it was a perfect situation. Absolutely perfect. And now you've lost my thought. And I don't think Phaneuf is long to be an Ottawa senator either. They're just trying to figure out uh, where they're going to end up trading him. But no Mathot, no Phaneuf next year for a team that came within a goal of going to a Stanley Cup final. That's just reality of the salary cap. It stinks. It's bad for fans, but not much teams can do. So, yeah, listen, I mean, could could uh, Pierre, the general manager there, uh, Dorian, um, Massage did a little better between Mathot and even Phaneuf, yes. But at the end of the day, would it have changed much? No. Is there any way he could have circled back after the expansion draft once, you know, George McPhee started shopping Mathot and realizing he wasn't going to get a first round? Is there any way Pierre Dorian could have gone back and traded for the player back? No. 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 No, not at all. And it was, a, it was an incredibly uh, expensive piece to get – Las, Ve uh, Las Vegas to uh, back off the expansion draft. So, hey, listen, Dallas loves him, right? Yeah, they think he's gonna. They think he's gonna do for Klimberg what he did for for uh, Carlson, and then be that steady guy on the blue line that allows their offensive horse to go get going. So, unfortunately, they lost a good player who still got a few good years left in him, uh, and they're just gonna have to build within because that's. That's the reality of the NHL is is develop, right? Let them play a few years and then either overpay them yeah. or let them go. Uh, speaking of overpaying, Andre Markov Kipper uh, reportedly wants twelve million over the next two years. I want to remind people he is thirty eight years old. Do you think he will get that from the Montreal Canadiens? First of all, the three of us want twelve million over two That's years. Correct. To support yeah. that. that is yeah. correct. Doesn't mean we're gonna get it. No. Right? But if you look at that team and you sit there and, and, and look at the cupboards that are empty and you're still playing 18, 20 minutes a night, he may not get $12 million over two, but he'll get something pretty decent here because, unfortunately, that's the lack of depth that Montreal has. So uh, there's, there's some challenging uh, days ahead for Carey Price to look up, that, up, up the ice and see uh, – how thin it is in certain areas, and we'll see what happens with Radulov. I don't see him uh, getting anywhere near the money he wants out of Montreal either. So you think Radulov will go too? I do. Yeah, really? right now. The, la the last I heard in Chicago is that uh, they weren't they weren't too happy with each other uh, unless some things have bridged in the last 24, 48 hours. There, there is a sense that he's not going to get the term that he's that he's looking for. All right, yeah, you mentioned the salary cap, and one of the one of the strongest conversations that we've had in the last couple of weeks is when you were on Hockey Central and suggested that the ask for Connor McDavid moving forward might be fourteen million dollars yeah. a year. Can can he do that? And yeah, will there be well, a backlash if he does go that number? Because he, he deserves he, it. I'm I'm not going to argue he doesn't deserve it. My God. He deserves 20. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, him and Sid, and him and Sid in a non-salary cap world would be 20 million dollar players, and everybody would say they're they're worth it. But the realities of the salary cap is that even at 14, it's awfully dangerous for the Edmonton Oilers to start figuring out ways to uh, to make uh, this team competitive around him. Uh, and unfortunately, it's just not. Dry side or uh, just McDavid, it's dry sidle too. So we're seeing the uh, the effects of uh, Tane, uh, Kane and Taves in Chicago, and you can argue that maybe they wouldn't have even ended up with the the, the cups that they won if 
if, Dun uh, if Duncan Keith didn't take that ridiculous contract and lock himself in as a $5 million cap guy, and if he was more a reality of being the 8 to $9 million player, uh, that's the only thing that maybe, if we look back, would have saved Chicago. I don't know whether or not Edmonton can win the Cup in the next two years, uh, but a contract like that would really force them to do it because over the course of this, maybe four to six years, when you got to go and revisit a lot of their key pieces, um, and by then we're talking the blue line, yeah. there's just not going to be enough money for everybody. So I had suggested in Chicago that uh, the Oilers take about $20, $21 million, put it in the middle of the room, let Connor and Drysaddle figure out whatever they want take but it doesn't really matter to me i need to be about i can't have 23 25 percent of my salary cap going to two players it doesn't work so we'll see what happens if i i think if they can get them in around 2021 20, it's okay for the oilers but if they go past 22 to 24 it's tough it's yeah. tough unless unless they see more revenue driving up the salary cap in the next few years that that many of us don't see. Kipper, great stuff. Uh, love seeing you in your uh, your element at mm -hmm. the Kiprios compound. Oh, no, and, don't uh, do it. Oh, no, I, no. I am so thirsty. I got 45 I'm minutes so left on this show. When do you guys hit the air Saturday for free agency, uh, Kipper? What's the schedule? Uh, I don't know. 1 a.m. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no uh, idea. We'll promo throughout the week. Thanks, Kipper. All right, boys. 11 a.m. I knew that. I was testing him. Just 11 for, uh, yeah, just our testing. free agency coverage right here on Sportsnet with the lovely and talented Nick Caprios. Hey, hey, it's Canada Day. Fire up the barbecue. Yeah. Get, get uh, Sportsnet now. Mm -hmm. You watch while, and you watch all the, all the signings come in while you make it a sausage. Yeah. We're going to make it a sausage? A little sausage. So a little sausage for signing season. Sausage signing. Signing yeah. Sausage fridge. Free yeah. sausage.